Yo, we're back. I just uploaded the PPFM double wasted video. Not gonna lie, probably should have made the length a little bit shorter. It is what it is. But on to the next. Boom, we're gonna make these jeans right here. These are the Jason jeans from the brand Dead Worldwide. Pretty dark name. But I think I have all of the stuff I need to recreate them. So boom, this whole pile right here. All of this from scrap, from jeans I don't even wear anymore. So save you money doing this DIY because I don't have to spend to buy new stuff because I have all the materials I think I'll need. Boom, these three for the mask area. This one, I saw some gray in it. Gonna use that. These are the base layer. Got a pair of Levi's, I think they're 510s. Yep. These jeans are actually, <laughs> I've had the jeans for a long time. I tapered them, then distressed them myself, blown out knees. Unfortunately, I probably will have to patch repair these. We'll see. Now in that pair, they use a pair of khaki jeans. I don't got that color, but I got these green jeans that I don't use from H&M. These are gonna be the donor pair that I'm gonna cut up and sew onto this. Um, and yeah, I think that's pretty much everything. So let's get into it. Fun fact, these 510s was the first pair of pants I ever made alterations to back in like 2016. That was when I first started working on pants. So they're a little sentimental to me, but we're gonna work on them anyways. First step, we're gonna open up the pants at the inseam to give easier access for the sewing machine. Then also wanna put this back together because this is like the folded, folded seam type seam. When I put it back together, I'm gonna make the pants a little bit wider because it's not gonna be folded like this. So, yee, let's do that real quick. Opening up the hems, opening up a seam or two, always the first couple of steps with these DIYs. Unless you're trying to hand sew everything, then I admire your patience. Pants are opened up at the inseam, ironed down, now we start stressing. So I changed up how I hold my rotary tool. Instead of holding it like a pencil, I hold it with the head facing towards me while still dragging the bit on the denim in an up and down motion. This way, it'll keep my hand away from the vent so it won't burn up my hand anymore since the grip is gonna be on the opposite side of the vent and it feels like it's a better angle where more surface area of the sandpaper is scraping the fabric. Now that the distressing is done, next up is to add in the patches. Fortunately, each patch didn't need to be hemmed, so the cutting process was pretty straightforward. All I had to do was to cut out each piece in the right shape, not having to worry about leaving allowance for any hemming. So this pocket of the original pants is gonna be blocked by this panel here. So instead I'm gonna make this panel, I mean this pocket, the replacement for that, which means I have to make sure I don't sew this down. Also here, it's kind of, blocking the pocket here so the maybe i won't sew this maybe i'll hmm so I'll probably just sew it here and then here it's gonna block off that pocket uh but i think for now it's gonna be this first and then skip this sew along here all the way up but to keep in mind this pocket though Again, super straightforward sewing here, just leaving about half an inch gap or maybe even less than that from the edge of the fabric. Now when sewing on the hip area of the pants, always keep in mind of the hand pockets. Otherwise, you can sew into the pouch and then you'll never be able to use them again, unless you redo it, of course. Now there were a couple of areas that were a little bit complicated for my sewing machine to reach, so I just hand sewed them. So I have the majority of the patches sewn onto the pants already. The last thing I have to do is the Jason mask in the middle. I just wanna show you guys how it looks like right now. It's pretty cool. The good thing about me using the green pants here is that they're actually a low rise, which is actually very helpful because the fact that it's gonna be sitting below the original waistband like this, it's not gonna be too low right here in the crotch area. So I think it works out that way. I didn't even realize that until like a couple minutes ago. The measurements I came up with for the Jason mask was a guesstimation from the picture reference, but honestly, I think I made it a bit too big. So I wouldn't really recommend using these measurements that I used, but I went with a width of nine inches and a height of 11 inches.
For the circles on the mask, I drew a circle with a protractor and then used that cutout as a pattern, placing it on black fabric and then I cut around it. Then I also did the same thing for the other shapes on the mask. When everything was cut out, I used a bit of glue to keep them in place to prep them to be sewn in. Okay, after careful consideration, I came to the conclusion that this side right here with all the markings and the drawings and the lines and whatnot, is gonna be the side that's gonna be shown on the pants. Originally, I wanted the cleaner side to be on it, but then, you know, I figured, you know, this is all distressed, it's all ripped up. Raw edges, it just is very deconstructed, very DIY, you know? And I think with all these markings, it kind of fits that aesthetic. Originally, the plan was to sew along the edges of each dot, like in a circle, but because I was working on lightweight, stretchy material, rather than messing with the tension and maneuvering the fabric around, I just sewed a zigzag stitch from one side of the dot to the other, with the width of the stitch at the maximum. That way, the process of sewing in 30 dots would be so much faster, and at the same time, it would secure each piece. Yo, the mask. Turned out pretty good, not gonna lie. Yeah, look at that, wow. Nice. Anyways, last few steps, let's go. Darning, couple of like accent stitches, different colored stitches, or just orange. Close up the pants, and we're done. Let's go. The last of the designs to add on were the darning stitches. I started off using white thread for the top stitch, and then swapped to a yellow thread to add in some accents. When everything was done, I sewed the inseam of the pants back together and then hemmed them because, you know, no more raw hems.